In this week's video, we're going to be taking a look at the differences between callbacks and promises in JavaScript. Let's get into it. So before we actually dive into code and start taking a look at what callbacks are, and what promises are, and how they might differ from one another, let's first talk about some theory and kind of understand some of the concepts at play here. See, the thing is JavaScript is single threaded. And so what that means is JavaScript can really only do one thing at a time. It cannot really do two things simultaneously at the same time. It can give you the illusion that it's doing more than one thing at a time, but it's really just that it's just an illusion. And to kind of help you understand this, let's think about us as humans, because as it turns out, we ourselves as humans can also only do one thing at a time. We're incapable of doing more than one thing at a time. So let's say, for example, that we're trying to cook up some pasta, right? Now, when we're cooking this pasta, the first step that, of course, we need to take is actually heat up the water. Now, heating up the water until it's actually fully boiled may take five to 10 minutes. So while that's actually happening, we can go and do something else because we're not currently actively cooking. We are in fact cooking. Our water is actually heating up right now, but we can go do something else. So this may give us the illusion that we're doing two things at the same time. But in reality, what's really happening is we have stopped the cooking process because now it's just going to go ahead and run on its own for a couple of minutes. And then while that's happening, we'll go and do something else and then actively focus on the other thing that we're currently doing, giving us the illusion that we're doing two things at the same time. And so that's basically what's happening in JavaScript as well. So for example, if we're trying to make some kind of asynchronous uh, call, let's say we're trying to talk to the database, read out a file, make an AJAX request, or something that actually happens asynchronously, essentially what's really happening is JavaScript will actually go and have somebody do that, kind of call upon the work, read the file, kick off that process, but then JavaScript basically delegates that process to somebody else. And that might be like C++ in your node environment or like the web API in a browser environment. And this is more about the concept of how the event loop works, which is not really the scope of this video. But suffice it to say, for what we need to understand right now is that process basically will kind of get handed off to somebody else, now kind of freeing up the hands of JavaScript, so to say, thereby allowing JavaScript to go do something else and then kind of wait for that work to be done. That's basically what asynchronous means. So again, the concept is we're letting some work happen while the work is technically happening, but not by our own hands. We're not actively involved with that. We can now go do something else, giving us the illusion that we're doing more than one thing at a time. But now the problem, of course, is in, let's say, the case of our uh, water boiling, one of the things that we're now going to be limited with, and one of the things that's going to be a little bit annoying for us is that every couple of minutes, we have to now go back to the kitchen and actually check to see whether the water is already boiling. Ideally, what we would like to do is maybe follow a recipe that tells us exactly how long it actually takes under a certain flame, how long the water may actually take to actually boil up. Therefore, we can just go ahead and set some kind of alarm. So in other words, turn on the water, set an alarm for 10 minutes, walk away. When that alarm uh, goes off, you now know that the water is done. And so that's actually what a callback is. So essentially in JavaScript, because the work is happening asynchronously, so instead of us developers having to like continuously keep going to see, is the work done? Is the work done? Is the work done? No. JavaScript gives us a mechanism to say, you know what? Listen, you go ahead and kick off this work. Give me the actual function that you want me to call when that work is done. And then when it's done, I'm going to go ahead and call it for you. I'm going to go ahead and ring your alarm. I'm going to let you know that the work is done. So now let's see how callback work in a code example. So here you can see I'm in a small little node project where I'm trying to use the FS module. The FS module is provided to us uh, by node and it lets us interact with the file system. And then here down on line seven, I'm basically calling upon its read file method, passing in the name of the file, which is basically going to this file over here. And all this file is basically telling you to do is to like the video if you feel like you're getting value out of it. And then basically what we're doing is we're saying read this file. And then when you're done, I'm going to take this print results function that I've created right up over here and then pass it into you. So essentially this print results function here is our callback because what's going to end up happening is this read file function is going to be asynchronous, which means that when we ask of JavaScript to go ahead and read out the contents of the random.txt file, JavaScript will take that work, delegate that to somebody else, freeing up its own hands, and then going and doing something else in the meantime within your code, thereby making it so that your users of your project don't have to wait for something to happen because JavaScript can go and delegate that work to somebody else and then go do more stuff. And so this is very similar to us sort of, you know, uh, heating up the water and then going and doing something else. But again, we don't want to have to continuously keep checking to see whether or not the work is done. Therefore, what JavaScript basically says, give me a function when you're going to go ahead and call the read file method, go ahead and give me a function that you want me to call when that work is done. So here we basically went ahead and defined the function called print results, which receives an error as the first argument and then result as the second argument. And right now, all this function is doing is it's simply uh, logging the result uh, to our terminal. But the thing that's also important to notice here is that we are actually never the ones calling the print results function. Instead, what we're doing is we're taking the print results function and we're passing it into the read file function. So basically what's going to be happening is read file is going to go ahead and read out the file. When that work is done, it's then going to go ahead and call the print result function. That's what makes the print result function a callback. Do the work. When it's done, tell me what you want me to call. Oh, you want to call the print result function? Great. I'll go ahead and call that for you. When the work is actually done, I'll go ahead and set off the timer on your phone when the water is done boiling. That's kind of like the, what the concept of a callback actually is. And this is how it actually works in practice in a JavaScript application. But on the other hand, the promise works vastly different from that. See, the thing about a promise is, and I'm going to actually borrow a, an example that Kyle Simpson, the author of You Don't Know JavaScript, I'm going to borrow his example of how he kind of describes what a promise is. So for example, let's say that you actually go to some kind of fast food restaurant and then you actually order a burger. Now, in most cases, what's going to 
end up happening is when you actually make that order, when you actually make that transaction to order the burger, while the burger itself might not be ready yet and you can't start eating it just yet, you're not going to get the burger in return for your transaction. But what you will get is you'll, in most cases, you'll actually get a receipt. This receipt kind of represents that future value of a burger that you're going to be getting at some point down the line. But immediately, as soon as you already make this transaction, as soon as you already order that burger, in return, you already get something that represents that future value. That's basically your receipt. That's basically your promise. Now, one of the really cool things about a promise as well, aside from the fact that you're actually getting something immediately right away to represent that future value, one of the things why this is now so cool is because now I'm no longer at the mercy of the other function calling my function. So for example, in the case of a callback, I have no control of when my callback is going to get called. I'm passing my function in to somebody else. And then whenever they, whenever their work is done, they just go ahead and call my callback. And then my work happens within my callback, but I'm not really in control of that. I'm kind of giving up that control. But on the other hand, in the case of the receipt, in the case of a promise, technically what I can really do is I can go up to the fast food counter, order my burger, get the receipt, and then go to like the next shop over, do some errands, and then like kind of come back an hour later and then finally exchange that receipt for my burger when I'm ready to do that. I can exchange the receipt when I want to and I'm ready to start eating. And so conceptually, the same thing is true with a promise in JavaScript. Because when you call a function in JavaScript that is an asynchronous function, but it returns a promise, as soon as you call that asynchronous function, even before the actual asynchronous work is done, in return, you're already going to get a promise. You're going to get something that's going to represent that future value. But the really cool thing is you can call that promise. You can sort of unpack that promise and get the underlying data that lives within the promise whenever you're ready to do that. You're not at the mercy of the API that you're using. You decide when you want to go ahead and unpack the promise and get the underlying value. So now let's kind of see this concept in code. So what you can see now on screen is that I'm actually using this function called read file promise, which I myself created inside of this read file promise function. Basically, all I did was I kind of wrapped the regular uh, read file method that were, that's given to us from FS, and I pretty much just wrapped it in a promise. And if you're not entirely sure about how this works, uh, definitely let me know in the comments, and I'd be more than willing to make a video just about this concept as well. But basically, what's happening now is this read file promise function is going to be a function that will read the file that I'm passing into it, and then as soon as you call it, it's already going to give me a promise in return. And so now, as you can see on line four, what I'm now able to do is because because it's returning a promise, I can simply say const result promise is equal to read file promise, which means as soon as I already call the function, in return, I'm already getting something. With the callback, I couldn't do that. I had to wait for the work to get done, and then I just get the result. But here, as soon as I actually call the function, I'm already getting something in return. I'm already getting that promise that's going to represent that future value. And now, what's really cool about it is here, you can now see that in on line six, I'm basically saying that I'm going to decide when I want to actually unpack the promise, only when a certain condition is met. I'm going to say if true, which of course, I actually want it to happen, which is why I'm simply saying if true. But technically, I can make a more meaningful condition here. I can say only under certain conditions we actually want to go ahead and unpack that underlying promise. Because again, with the promise, it's now my it's in my possession. I can do with it whatever I want, and I can choose to unpack it when I'm ready, not when the API is ready. So here I'm basically saying, give me the promise. When true, then go ahead and call the dot then method, which is basically now as if I'm going to go ahead and take the receipt and go back to the counter and now exchange that receipt for the actual underlying burger. So here the dot then method is basically that exchange. I'm now going to go ahead and unpack the promise and sort of get out the underlying value. And this is now when I'm going to go ahead and say console log result. What I'm actually going to see will not be the promise, but I'm actually going to be seeing the underlying value, the sort of text within that file that's asking you to like the video. So now if we go into our terminal, and we actually run node app.js. We now do in fact uh, get the text that if you feel like this video is giving you value, consider leaving it a like. It really does help the channel. But we can actually see that we now actually get this text. And again, the way that this is working is because we first got the promise, that intermediary step, something that represents that future value. And then when we were ready, we actually went ahead and unpacked that promise. We call the dot then method on it and actually get the value that lives within that promise. And now we can actually use the underlying value. Well, anyways, that does it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found these. Well, if you did, please drop a like. It really does help the channel. And I'll be back next week with another video. Woo!